Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm Jonathan, this is GDXR Learn. I want to say a big shout out and thank you to Chris here from our Discord server who put together the initial project for this and was able to figure out most of the stuff we're about to do in today's tutorial as well as allowing me to create a video on it for everyone else. Thank you so much. There's links in the description to our socials if you head over there and drop some likes, that would be absolutely awesome. Excellent, now let's get started. We are going to take a look in this video at how we can set up a smooth local motion system similar to Half-Life Alex. This could be used for games, architecture, anything really. So first thing we're going to do is let's have a look at what the project is. So as you can see, we have snap rotation enabled. So we can use our right thumbstick to snap rotate. And then if we jump in, you'll see that we've got flight of stairs as well as, and we can use our left thumb stick to move forward, back, left or right. And if we walk up to our stairs, we can actually pop up these. And if we press B on the key, uh, actually B on the right controller, we can jump up and down as well. So we can jump over, and then if we fall off the edge, we can rotate around on the spot. And see that we can't actually walk through objects but in this case if we crouch lower than what it is we can actually move through it so we're going to cover all of this as well as how we can grab objects and pick them up while working with smooth local motion as normally there's a couple of bugs with that so let's get started so inside the vr template first thing we're going to do is actually open up our project settings i'm going to go to edit project settings, and then we're going to look for inputs. In here, we're going to add two new inputs, as we've already got four or three of them that we're already going to use. We're just going to reuse the motion control, the thumb left, and the the right ones. So first thing we need to do is go to action mappings, and we're going to create two, and we're going to name the first one jumping. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Oculus Quest so I'm going to use the touch controls and for jumping, I'm going to use the right B button. I believe it is. Let's have a look. So yep, the right B button. And for our sprinting, we're going to use the left thumbstick. So we're going to click it in. So we're going to Oculus touch left and we'll look for thumbstick. So we've got our two custom inputs. And now what we can do is we can actually move over to the motion controller pawn. Uh, we can start setting up our blueprints in there. So we've got a blueprints, motion controller pawn. And we look for some free space. I like to do all of this down in this area here because it provides some good room. The first thing we need to do here is actually go to class settings and we're going to change our parent class to character. And what that does is if you look in our components list, we now actually have a capsule, an arrow component and a mesh. The arrow and the mesh are hidden by default, but we're going to be using the capsule component quite a bit to, through this tutorial to, to get our gravity and our movement working. With our new capsule in place, we can go to our viewport. And what we're going to do is we're going to select our VR origin and we're going to move this down. I believe it's 90. So it'll be at the bottom of our capsule and you see here it's a negative 90 on the z so we're going to hit compile and save and now we can go back to the event graph where we start doing some coding so the first thing we're going to do is actually create a bool variable so b and we're going to call this can teleport we're then going to compile make sure it's set to false and if we zoom into our graph we need to find out where our input action teleport left and input action teleport right is. And what we do is we're going to press B on the keyboard. We're going to create two of those for each one. And we're going to plug these into our pressed and released. Like so. And now what we can do is actually use this can teleport to decide what we do with these. So do they get, plug those in, 
if we compile and save, you'll see that I set to false. And what I'm going to do now is actually set up a category called smooth locomotion. So we actually keep it organized because we're going to have a, quite a few variables that we'll end up putting in here as we go through the video. So now we won't actually be able to teleport. So we can find our free space and we can start setting up our inputs. First thing we're actually going to work on for the movement or the smooth local motion is the movement controls. And to do that, we actually need to bring in our inputs, which already exist inside of our project. So we're going to use the left uh, thumb left Y and thumb left X on our left controller to actually control the way we move around the scene. So first thing we're going to do is go input action or search thumb left there it is so motion controller yep motion controller thumb left x and motion controller thumb left y and we're going to make sure these uh, got a little bit of room and for now we're just going to focus on the x as we can actually duplicate most of this down to work for our y with the addition of it by changing one node so we don't have to worry too much about it we now need to create two new variables. So we're going to create a variable called movement dead zone. Which will be a float. And our second is going to be called movement scalar. This will be used to control how fast we move within the project. So I'm going to set both of these categories to smooth locomotion just so we keep it all organized. And then I'm going to start by bringing in our get movement dead zone and get movement scalar. Don't know why I put it down there because we'll use it in a minute. And then we're going to actually convert our axis value to an absolute. So this is essentially takes a negative and turns it into a plus or it turns a plus into a plus. So it makes sure that no matter what, our value will always have a plus value. It basically removes the minus sign. And um, we're going to check that this is greater than our movement dead zone, which should by default be set to 0 0.2. Plug that in there, and then we'll do a branch and hook that up. Once that's done, we're actually going to grab another reference to our access mapping, and we're going to multiply this by our movement scalar. which is going to have a value of 0.6. We're then going to go from the true value and we're going to do add movement input. And we're going to use this to control our scalar value. And because we're going to use our camera to control our forward direction, we're actually going to get a reference to our camera. And in this case, because that's our thumbstick left, which moves left and right, we're actually going to do get right vector. And we're going to use this to control our movement. So that's pretty much it for our left and right movement. What we're going to do is we're going to copy everything apart from the events. So I'm going to do select everything and then do control W to duplicate. And we're going to plug this into our Y value. And then connect it the same. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to replace the get right vector with a node called get forward vector. And now what that allows us to do is actually move around the scene forward and back, left and right. Also, don't forget to comment our code. So I'm going to select everything, do C on the keyboard, and I'm just going to call this thumbstick movement. So now, if we test our... So with our movement system set up, we can hop back over to our scene. And what we need to do is actually move our camera position or our pawn so the camera is on the floor and the capsule is stood on it so now we can actually go to preview vr we can jump into the headset and actually use the left thumbstick to move around the scene walk around forward back left and right so we're on the right track so something to something to cover is room scale movement as the next thing on the list so you may have noticed that if you move around the scene and if you set the capsule component so it's visible, 
we're not actually in the capsule. It's not following us. So I've got the, the headset in front of me, which is why I can't see the capsule. But if we turn it around, you can see it's over there. It's essentially behind us where the center point should be. What we need to do is make sure this capsule follows our camera and then updates its position to match ours. So that's what we're gonna do next. Otherwise we won't be able to do stuff like fall off ledges or crawl underneath doorways. So hopefully this will actually get it sorted. And to do this, we're gonna start by creating a custom event. And we're gonna call this update room scale movement. And this is gonna be fired from our event tick. So we scroll out a little bit and we come down here just on the left. We can actually use our sequence to create a new update. So now this is gonna fire anytime we move, or at least it'll keep up with us. We're gonna now add two nodes. We're gonna do add world or add actor world offset. And then we're gonna drag off this one and we're gonna do another one called add world offset. And we're gonna do this for our VR origin. So what we're gonna do now is actually use our camera reference and our capsule world locations. So get world location. And we're gonna subtract them from each other. Apart from our Z value, I believe it. So we're gonna do minus vector vector. And then we're gonna plug those together. And we're actually gonna split this pin because we only need the two values. So we're gonna split both of these. And we're gonna hook up X to X and Y to Y. And now to set up our delta location, we're essentially gonna negate our X and Y values. What this does, it essentially acts as a one minus node. So it'll reset it back to the opposite of what it is. So we do negate float. Nope, sorry. We're gonna to wanna to do a negate vector. And then we're actually gonna split the A pin for the X and Y. And we keep Z as zero. Now we can plug this into our Delta location. And if we jump back into our project, pop the headset on, you'll see that the capsule is actually where it should be. So it's matching the camera. If we move around, it follows us as well. And if we actually move our head, it updates its position as well. So now we've essentially got room scale working. We can comment our code. So you see, update room scale capsule. Yep. So with our thumbstick movement complete and our room scale capsule, we can actually add in our jump and sprint. So first thing we're gonna do is right click and we're gonna do event jump. We wanna use, actually we just search jump we should find our action event jumping. And then we're gonna right click again, then we're gonna do sprint. So event action sprinting. And for our jumping, super simple, we're just gonna drag off pressed and we're gonna search for jump. We're actually gonna use our jump node that already exists. And then for our sprinting, we're gonna bring in a reference to our movement scaler and we're gonna set this. And we're gonna do this twice for pressed and released. And we're gonna set pressed to one and our released back to default, which is 0.6. So now if we comment these, we're gonna do sprinting. And we should now be able to actually jump into the project. And with our left controller, we can move left and right. Our capsule follows us in place. And if I push forward on the left stick and then click it in, we actually sprint with speed. So the sprint is working exactly how we want it. And now if we press B on the, the right controller, we actually jump up and down as well. So now we can move on to crouching. So we're gonna find some free space and we're gonna to need to create two custom events again. The first one is gonna be initialize capsule height, which will be fired from our event begin play. 
And the second will be set capsule height, which will be fired on tick and act as our update. So we're going to do custom event, initialize capsule height. And our second one will be set capsule height. And so we don't forget we'll fire these now or we'll set up that now. So the first one is going to be from our event tick, which will be set capsule height. height call function. And then we're going to initialize capsule height from our event begin play. So initialize capsule height. That we hit compile and save. Now if we move down, we have both of these working. What we need to do now is get a reference to our compo capsule component and then get half height. So get capsule half height. We're now going to create a custom float or a new variable float, and it's going to be called previous capsule height. Eh, that should be fine for spelling. And we're going to want to make that a float. And again, we're going to set the category to smooth local motion. So we're going to drag this in as a set and we're going to connect those together. And now we do compile and we're going to comment this and we're going to call it initialize capsule height capsule height and now we need to get a reference to our capsule and our vr origin because we're going to be changing these and the first thing we need to do is drag off our capsule component and set capsule size we're going to plug that into our custom event and then we're going to drag off our capsule component and get scaled capsule size uh, capsule radius sorry Going to plug that into there so make sure it's all neat and tidy so we don't get confused now vr origin we're going to drag off this and we're going to do add relative location make sure it's the right one and we're going to plug that into there and what we need to do is actually split our delta pins because we're going to use some stuff for that because now we need to do some math. We're going to get our get orientation, orientation and position, which is from our head mount display. So our headset. And we're going to split our position pin. So we've got access to all three axes. And in this case, we're just going to use the Z, but we will be dividing it. So I'm going to hold shift. Nope, do a slash. So we get divide float. And I'm going to divide this by two. And then we're going to add 10 to our float. And what this is going to do is essentially halves our capsule height, but it adds 10 on the top of our head. So we've got a little bit of room to work with. So we've got to crouch a little bit lower than the doorway just so we can get through it. We can now plug this into our in half height. So I'm going to move this over a little bit just to keep it a little bit tidy. And then I'm going to bring in a reference to our previous capsule height which we're going to get. And then we're also going to set it as well, straight after our add relative location. And to do this, we're going to go to our previous capsule height. We're going to do a subtract. So float by float. And I'm going to bring this over and do a reroute node just to keep this tidy. Plug that one in there. We're going to drag this over and then do another one. And we're going to plug that in there and our Previous capsule half height is going to plug into our delta Z. So after that, we can now comment our code, do C, and we're going to call this update capsule height. So now that we have our update capsule height created, we can actually go into our map and we can create a little, little doorway. So we'll use a cube and we're going to leave a space in between. I don't want to crouch too low. so. We'll make it a little bit shorter than our player. And then we'll just scale this over. So we've got our little doorway. So now if I hit play and we crouch back, we can put on the headset. And if we walk over to our door that we've created, you'll see that we can't actually walk through it. But if I crouch down and I get low enough, we can walk through the doorway.
So now that we can crouch, we're going to actually focus on our snap rotation. So we need to do some math on this just so we can actually rotate in in place rather than as a as an arc if you move away. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our motion controller pawn. We're going to find some free space. I recommend doing this below everything else because this set this setup gets quite quite cluttered pretty fast. So make sure you've got some some spare space for this. And the first thing we need to do is actually create five different variables. Yeah, five, not four. <laughs> five different variables. Uh, it's going to be one bool and four floats. And they're going to be in this way. So we're going to have B smooth rotation. We're going to have turn dead zone, smooth rotation speed, snap rotation degrees, and then we're also going to have rotation angle. So you're going to want to make sure we've got all of those for this next part. So to save some time, I'm going to copy and paste these from my blog post. Don't forget, link in the description if you want to view the written version of this tutorial. So let's do B smooth rotation. And we're going to make sure this is a bool. And by default, we want to set this to false. The next one we need is a float, which we're going to rename, and this is going to be called turn dead zone. So copy and paste this in. And this is going to have a value of zero, so we won't need to do anything with this. The third is going to be a smooth rotation speed. And this is going to have a value of one by default. So we need to compile, set this to one. Our fourth variable is going to be called snap rotation degrees. And for this one, I like setting this to 15. So it's going to be, it's working from zero to 360. So depending where, how far you want those degrees to snap, you can change this value. I like 15, it seems like a, a nice amount, but I know some people prefer it smaller or bigger. But also, if you know how to do settings, there's nothing stopping you from giving the, the user that option to, to change this. So our final float is going to be rotation angle. And that's going to be set to zero by default. So we're going to start by searching for our motion controller event access events the right x there it is that's the right one now excellent and we're going to create a delay and we're going to set this to 0.5 and after this we're going to create a branch and we're going to connect our smooth rotation directly to it. After this, we're going to need two branches, one for our true execute and our false execute. And then we can set up the conditions from our access value. So we're going to drag off here. We're going to do absolute. So again, that converts it from a negative to a plus. So rather than having two lots of branches, we've just got the one. And the next step is to make sure that this is greater than our turn dead zone. And we're going to plug this into our bottom branch. So this branch down here is going to control our snap rotation. And we're going to work on that first. And then we'll move to the smooth location because we can just copy most of what we've already got to it. We're then going to create another branch, which is hooked up to our tree. And from here, we're going to set our rotation angle. And we're going to do this twice. So control W with the node selected, true and false. And then we're going to get our snap rotation degrees, do a get, and we can plug that into our top one. And for the bottom one, we're actually going to do a minus float. And we're going to swap these around. And we're going to do minus one and plug that into our rotation angle. So now that we actually have our rotation angles set, we're going to drag off one and we're going to do a do once. 
and I'm going to plug that into our set. And while we're here, we're going to also set up our false with a reroute node, or two of them, to reset our do once. And while we're here, we're also going to do a sequence, so S on the keyboard. And from our second, we're going to do a delay. And we're going to drag this underneath, and we're going to have this delay reset our do once as well, like so. From our then zero, so we're going to do a set actor rotation. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get actor rotation. And we're going to split the pin. And we're going to add our Z value to our rotation angle. So let's bring that in. So we've got rotation angle and do a get, plug that in there. And then we're going to want to split our struct or split our rotation pin where we will connect it to our yaw. So let's tidy this up a little bit. Now what we can do is actually copy these three nodes. So our get action rotation, our plus and our set actor rotation. And we're gonna copy and paste this up here because it's gonna be used for this branch. And we're gonna connect that to our true. We're also gonna bring a reference to our smooth rotation speed. So we're gonna get that. And we're gonna multiply it by our axis value. So we're gonna drag off our axis value to shift star. So we get a float. We're gonna plug that in there. And we're gonna connect that to our minus one. And again, I'm just gonna make sure this is tidy. And now we can actually select everything. We can put a comment around it. And we can call this smooth rotation. I almost forgot actually, we need to drag off our axis value. I'm gonna do a reroute pin. And we wanna do a greater than float and check this say it's greater than zero. And then we can plug that into our branch. Otherwise it would not have worked. So now we can do compile, save and play. And if we jump into the headset, we now have the ability to use the right thumbstick to move right and we can move left as well as having the ability to walk around, jump and sprint. The issue at this point though, is you'll see that if we close our fists and we move forward, that we actually move away from them. And the same happens if we pick up actors and we collide with ourselves. So that's the next thing to fix. To fix this, we need to create a custom collision object channel. So we've got to go back to our project settings and we're going to look for a tab called collision just underneath engine. And here we'll go new object and I'm going to call this player collision. Uh, it doesn't like spaces, so make sure that's out. And we're going to set default response to block. We'll hit accept. And now if we go back to our motion controller, we can select our capsule. And if we go over, we're going to scroll down in our details panel and we'll find where it says collision presets. We want to do a drop down. Then we want to make this custom because we want to change our object type to player collision. And we're going to set this to ignore our player collision. So we're essentially ignoring ourselves, which is exactly what we're after. Actually, it's going to be overlap, not ignore. So with that done, we can hit compile and save, and we're going to need to open up our motion controller. So our BP underscore motion controller. I'm getting an error for the new project settings because I'm in 4.26. So I'm just going to delete that. And we don't need to worry about that. And what we need to do now is actually change our grab sphere to be custom. So collision presets, set this to custom. And you see here, we can actually ignore our player collision now. So we don't want our hands or the grab sphere to ignore it. So we do that. And you'll also find that if you're using the default template, when you close the hands, it'll actually cause it to turn the collision on. So you can see here, we actually have on grip state, set collision enabled and set collision enab uh, enabled twice. And the second one sets it to collision enabled. This causes an issue. So we actually have to do the exact same thing for our hand mesh. 
even though it says no collision. So we're going to drop down. We're going to go to custom. And we're going to do, actually, we're going to do ignore. So we'll set it to ignore. We'll make sure the grab sphere is also ignore. Yep, that's fine. And now if we test it out. So now if we jump back over to the headset and we jump in, we can still walk around. And this time I can actually close my hands, still move around, jump, all the fun stuff. But now if we grab an object, you'll see that we're back to square one. So we just need to do the exact same thing for our interactables. So if we jump back in, we're gonna go to our motion controller. We're gonna open up pick up cube. And in here, we're gonna to wanna to select our static mesh. Collision presets set to custom. And we're gonna do ignore player to compile and save. So now if we jump in, we can walk around. We can jump up and down. We can't walk through our doorway unless we crouch below it. We can snap turn using the right and left on the thumbstick. And if we grab an object, we can now move around and walk with them. If I don't hit everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it has helped. If it did, please like, subscribe and share. Don't forget to visit Carissia's YouTube channel, send some stuff over there, be awesome. And a really big thank you to all my Patreons and everybody over on the Discord server for making this possible. Awesome. Have a good one, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.